Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War, and we are playing as the Confederacy in this grand uh, campaign Let's Play. We've moved on to the Overland campaign, so we just fought uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. It was a bloodshed that wrecked our army. We had to spend a ton of prestige and money and effort to rebuild just a portion of our forces. We have the 1st Corps, which is back to full strength, only 2,000-man brigades, and these artillery units are small by design. Uh, but uh, we've built this, this core force back out to, to, near, to full strength. The 2nd Corps is at near full strength, so it has three full-strength divisions, but the 4th Division, which we added... Uh, toward the end of the Chickamauga campaign, the ability to add four divisions, is not fully built out. And the third corps is literally just an organizational shell. There is no real organization behind it. Uh, so you can see here that uh, we don't even have a single unit in the third corps. So the first and second corps are robust in 20,000 plus unit uh, forces, uh, but the third, the third corps is kind of gone from being a three-division unit. Now, granted, we did strip that before Chickamauga as well. Uh, originally, we had three cores of three divisions each. We switched it to two cores of four divisions, and we were down to two divisions of soldiers in the third core is, is kind of what we were able to to uh, sort of hastily put together. Um, but we haven't, uh, you know, certainly have gone the opposite direction since then. Now, we're at the start of the Overland Campaign. Now, technically, Mansfield isn't the Overland Campaign. We're going to fight the Battle of Mansfield, uh, which is going to be in the Western Theater, and then we'll get to Saunders Farm, which is the Wilderness. Uh, we'll then fight Laurel Hill, which I believe is Spotsylvania, and then we'll fight Cold Harbor, which is the Battle of Cold Harbor. Now, uh, I'm going to fight these battles to see if there's any way to... Uh, build my forces up. I could just skip to Cold Harbor, but I don't want to do that quite yet just because the enemy army is so large. Uh, Cold Harbor should be easier as I'll be mostly on the defensive, uh, but I don't know if I have a sufficient force to hold off against enemy enemy numbers there. So I'm going to hope to weaken them and strengthen myself, uh, starting with the Battle of Mansfield. We'll see how this all plays out. So you can see here the Battle of Mansfield is a Confederate attack against Federal positions in wooded terrain. A Federal force is moving to the northwest across the state of Louisiana, accompanied by a flotilla on the Red River, so it's from the Red River campaign. It seems that their destruction is or their destination is Shiverport, which they could use as a base for invading Confederate Texas. The Union Army op opted to take the shorter route via the Ma uh, via the town of Mansfield that is far away from the flotilla's gun range. As the Yankees move out of Mansfield and continue their march, you have a good chance of stopping them, defeating them, and canceling their plans. So in this battle, I'm thinking we have up to 25 brigades. I'm going to use my first core, my full strength core. We get up to 9,000 replacements after this battle, so th I'm guessing this is going to be a pretty intensive battle. Uh, but if I'm going to be attacking against tough terrain, I want my troops with the best weapons. Granted, they're the most expensive to replace, so we'll see how this all plans out. We've got 33,000 soldiers, 73 guns, 4 divisions, and 1 corps that we're going to bring to play here. You can see here, General, the vanguard of the army has been informed about our stand and is taking defensive positions in these woods near Chapman's farm. They'll certainly try to hold until the rest of their army arrives. We expect more brigades to arrive, but if we, want, if we wait too long, the Yankees will have time to deploy their whole army, and then they will greatly outnumber us. You have to attack now. Okay. If you crush the vanguard and occupy the woods, it will be easier to fight the Federal Army, defeating it in detail as it arrives on the battlefield. So we get 16 of our brigades. We've got to attack up this uh, open face. I don't know if we can flank the enemy here and then push back to the actual objective. So I think that's what I'll try and do. Um, these troops are largely... I think an okay terrain. I suppose we'll move these further south. Again, these are the best of the best of my troops, although I am putting my one-star brigades out front. Just because if, if they're going to take the heaviest casualties, I want them to be the cheapest to replace. Stonewall Brigade. These guys have the Henrys, right? No, they've got the Fayettevilles. We'll put them in the second rank. Actually, this is going to kind of be our guard units. Machine Gun Brigade has the Henrys, so the Henrys and the Fayettevilles are here, the machine guns and the stone walls. 
Rest of the units have good weapons, but nothing sort of spectacular. We're really going to stack up on the federal left. You know, the alternative would be to use this wood wooded terrain on their on their left, swing around this way rather than using the woods in the south. It's a little bit more open down here. But from a timing perspective, I think the advantage of overwhelming them quickly comes with attacking them where I'm planning to attack them. Get our artillery out here in the open. Alright, I think we're going to go ahead and use the force at hand. Let's go ahead and pause here. Get our artillery up. To the open over here to form kind of a grand battery, if you will. Infantry here. Going to cross the stream through these woods and flank them. That's the idea, anyway. Well, maybe we use a couple of brigades over here to swing wide the other direction. Double envelopment. I'll go sort of up and behind. And we'll leave these elite troops kind of in the open, but also, actually, let's move them under cover in this wood line here. A little bit on the right or southern side of the map, but without too much exposure, I think. Each butcher will go up here, and we're actually going to detach some skirmishers from some of these lead units as well to kind of act as scouts because I have no cavalry. So if we can get them out here, they'll get some good eyes on, perhaps. They'll also help lessen the casualties we might take. Give us some time to adjust. And especially on the flank here, they move quicker too. We'll get our troops going. Hey, J Street. Hope you're having a nice night. Yeah, I mean, obviously I don't want to lose too many troops here, but we'll see how this all works out. Orders to this unit. Enemy artillery! All right, I'd rather they waste their fire on our skirmishers. I probably won't attack up this middle area unless I'm just surprised and they don't man it too heavily. That's what these skirmishers are, are going to tell me. These Benning skirmishers lost pretty badly. These Federals must have really good weapons. I mean, our own troops have CS Richmond rifles. Those aren't bad. Alright, so we spotted two enemy units. Looks like they're refusing their flank a bit. Should be able to go up and around them, hopefully without too much difficulty. There we go. Routed them that way. Let's swing this brigade wide, too. Move the skirmishers forward. Got a visual on some of these guys here. So there's some cavalry in the in the woods over here, but I think nothing we would have too much difficulty dealing with. We're going to really try and kind of overwhelm them on this flank. So again, we're going to swing wide. Skirmishers are engaging this cavalry in melee. Not really what I wanted. Skirmishers put here. 
got to be some troops here. I'm assuming they didn't leave their center open. There's no infantry here? Oh, yes, there is. Never mind. You stay back. You too. All right. Federal Cavalry is on the flank here, too. Cavalry and skirmishers. So we will go wider than I had originally planned and form up a line to envelop them. I want to get these guys into the woods, though, so we can help minimize how many casualties we take. It's open terrain to go way wide. Pushers forward. So I don't know if I'm being, I may not be being aggressive enough in this game to really have success. I guess we'll see. This is, a, I think, going to be a tricky, tricky battle for us. And that way, the... Artillery up a bit. All right, so we've got two hours more. I don't know if the enemy reinforcements wait to arrive until after those two hours or if they arrive early. Obviously, we'll find that out. Into the wood line. We've maintained most of our condition by keeping these guys moving at standard speeds. Getting them into woods now. All right. In good cover. All right, Alan, move up this way. We don't need to swing that wide, guys. So we're chewing up that cavalry on that flank. Meanwhile, this flank, it looks like the 1830, or 1855 brigade is engaged. These troops up as well. Spawn skirmishers to the flank, and we'll try and outflank this whole federal line. I guess we'll see how this works out. We've got like 8,000 soldiers on their flank. Move these infantry up here. Move this artillery up close as well. Wow. Hopefully not within rifle range, but I'm rolling the artillery up a bit, leaving some troops like Pogi and these skirmishers on my flank just to threaten the enemy if they do kind of try and get around us. The rest of our troops are arriving, so we're two hours in. I'm going to guess that we have exactly three hours, so my assumption is that the enemy reinforcements start arriving here pretty soon. I really want to get in position on their flank. Well, let's get these guys here. Let's move them at the double. Get these guys over here, move them on the double. Swing these around. Seven and guns will kind of be in reserve. Hogue up over here. More closely guard the flank. Our own skirmishers are getting out a little bit in advance, getting chewed up a bit. More than a bit. Pretty heavily. Ants. Why are they getting flanked like that? And then they're come up here on the double. PHG, come inspire them. Skirmishers get up here to protect the artillery. And I guess we kind of keep probing their rear. We've got 
Vaughn's Brigade is really getting around these guys. Uh, Vaughn's Skirmishers. Hexamer just got thrown back. But now you've got Benning coming in on their flank here. We've got a nice little line of artillery here. That's all going to fire into their flank. Unfortunately, the enemy is in very good cover. So these skirmishers are a little bit of a nuisance. See, we are pushing them back, though. They are being compelled to retreat. Stop double-quicking them. move our skirmishers forward here to extend our line a little bit. And then I think we should be just about into position on the other flank. We are. So we'll advance these guys in this light wood toward the edge of the wood line before we begin a full full-throated charge. Keep the guys in the open out here a bit. Lynch, Kirkland, they'll move more up, up the middle. I don't, don't want to waste all that time getting everybody in perfect position. This is about what we need. All right, these skirmishers are doing their duty. These skirmishers are also doing their duty. All right, so let's go ahead and pause real quick here. So our troops are starting to move up on this flank. Move these guys back in and around. We've almost got their army destroyed. Not destroyed, sorry, surrounded. Don't speak too soon. Um. But I'm trying to use the wood line as best as I can. So some of these skirmisher units are definitely out in the open. I'm less worried about them. That's not really my focus. My focus is breaking this flank and then just rolling this line up. So these guys can kind of pin the enemy in place. And uh, they'll take some casualties doing it. But frankly, that's their job. Okay, you can see here the 77th Illinois is being thrown back. Now the bad thing here is a federal division's coming up. We're going to kind of have to shift some forces from this flanking maneuver to try and deal with them. They're going to be more in the open, though. Get the Stonewall Brigade and their fate bills. Why don't you guys go wipe out that artillery battalion? Gate or whatever it is. All right, so we'll have to form a blocking position with these two brigades to guard our flank as the rest of these troops start to move forward. All right, we'll move these men forward. So we've broken several of these units on their flank. Continue rolling up their line, moving this way. Infantry will advance kind of more on the center. You can see a lot of them are retreating toward our other line of troops. You can see the Kentucky Brigade is really more or less in the open. These guys are going to take some heavy casualties. I think I moved them forward a little bit too soon. Backdown will come in from behind. Pull a lot of the... They're retreating forward. <laughs> uh, the wrong side of the map. All right, get this fly wagon out of here. All right, so we secured the woods. And we're kind of smashing them, but the problem is we don't have a blocking force, really, an, an effective, a, a large enough blocking force is not in front. They can kind of just retreat the other way. Retreat forward. Retreat forward. 
archer forward. There is some melee meleeing going on. I'm not quite sure where. Some of our skirmishers are routing some of the newly arrived artillery. Yeah, they're escaping. Kingdom Brigade is losing more men without doing as much damage as I had hoped. Hogue is losing quite a few men. Come on, route him! In any event, we're taking the objective. It's just a matter of when the Federals counterattack, if they do. I'm not sure if there's a second phase to this battle or not. It is 6.17 in terms of the time on the map, so it is getting late in the day. So maybe there isn't a second phase. Maybe this division doesn't attack us. At which case, I'd be perfectly fine if they don't. I've lost some casualties, but I don't think I've lost anywhere near, you know, 9,000, which is what you get for a victory here. Into advancing. Well, these guys are going to set up defensive positions at the end of this wood line. And then we'll see. As they all retreat right in front of our lines. Some of these guys at the end of the line where they're not really doing a ton of the fighting are getting ridiculous kill totals. Some of these artillery batteries did pretty well. I'd say two or three hundred casualties without ever coming in close range of the enemy is pretty solid. Alright, the machine gun brigade did its job, although I would have preferred not to lose any casualties. Obviously we did. Uh, the Yankees over here are starting their counterattack. Let's fall back. I don't want to uh, attack these guys while we're in the open. I don't want to deal with a stand-up fight in the open. Go ahead and fall these guys back to this wood line. Get our reserves up here. And we'll use the cover that we have in naturally against any large-scale assault. So there's actually cavalry there in the woods to our flank. Go ahead and see if we can get our artillery up in time stack some troops up there for our defense. We'll have to leave some in place to deal with the troops we already drove off, because there's still quite a few of them. But, uh, should be okay, I think. They're, they'll either have to advance wide through the left through this wood line, or they'll have to expose their flank to our troops over here. So we'll see how this all plays out. See here they've got two brigades attacking our troops who are in good cover. I'm gonna swing the machine gun brigade around this way. We'll move them quickly. They're gonna lose some uh, cohesion, if you will. That's okay. Alright, fall back, refuse your flank. And here they come. 
Skirmisher, you stay in good cover. Skirmishers, you guys rejoin your unit. Alright, so they're trying to charge and break our right. Some of these brigades have lost quite a few. No reason to stay in an open field fight where they've got good terrain. Fall back into that covered area. Kind of form a semi circular position here if we need to. Shoot them as they run. There you go. Glory's driven back. Kirkland on our flank is hanging in there. Only 34 minutes left to hang on. Go take the wagon! Alright, my goal here at this point in the game is just to maintain our army to lose as few casualties as possible. Oh, don't don't charge. Just shoot them. There you go. Rainer just got ravaged. Stonewall's got the Fayettevilles. Seven hundred casualties against eight or seven hundred casualties inflicted against eight hundred. Advance these guys here to secure the flank. Supplies surrendered to us. Very good. Very good indeed. You guys would move into this wood line. The enemy is advancing. Alan, I don't want you in the open like that. Get back into cover. Beckham, advance. Pogue, stay over here. Alright, now we can advance into their flank. Hopefully shatter it. I don't think they have enough time. They're trying to break our flank, but I don't think they have enough time to do it. Ooh, canister. Don't do that. Hopefully they shot their their wad, as it's called, and then we can just hit them incessantly. Although these guns don't seem to be as accurate. They, surf, they sur sure fire quickly, but not doing much effect with that fire here, you can see. Oh, God. More canister against our Henrys. I wonder how many rounds. So they just fired a round of canister. We got our own volley off. Got a second one off. Why aren't they retreating yet? I would have thought they would have done a better job of, like, actually tearing apart the uh, batteries. Maybe if we advance our skirmishers in front. No, halt. Oh, they're blocked. Really? Skirmishers block the fire of the main unit? You guys move over here. I'm losing way more men than I wanted. Battle's almost over. A matter of inflicting casualties on the Yankees and hopefully not taking too many more of our own. Four more minutes. So they do well in the flank when they're shooting at Dwight's brigade there. He's not shooting back. You can see the Federals are now attacking on our far left. We're holding them off ever so barely. They're not going to have time to win this thing, so this should be over. And it is. We'll finish and end the fight as quick as we can. You can see here we lost 5,000 We lost five thousand troops. And that was more than I would have liked. Um, but we get 9,000 replacements, so it'll increase our overall strength. Uh, the enemy lost 9,000 in terms of goods. Um... Did we rescue any of those Henrys? We captured some Sharps, Frank and Wessons, some Manyards, Berries. I don't think we recovered any of our... Oh, we did. 70 of our Henrys. We lost like 120 men in that unit, so we'll have to spend a bit of money uh, replacing those losses.
And see here, we can do this with rookies here in this brigade. Fortunately, we only lost 37 men in the Stonewall Brigade. That was a good performance. Um, only 1,600 to replace those casualties. Uh, 5,700 to replace our casualties in the Henry unit. Um, Going to be quite a bit more to replace our losses in Allen's unit. I didn't realize he was a three-star brigade. That's 32 grand. Um, we can replace the Texas Brigade for free. Bonds Brigade for free. Ogues Brigade almost for free. Back here and get Devon, Benning, Octon, Exumer. Going with all free stuff where we can. And it looks like all of our casualties can be replaced with just freebies. That was a good battle. It was a good little battle. We didn't lose too many men. We gained quite a bit of quite a bit of experience. We ended with more money than we went in with. Yes, sir. Gained some prestige. Overall, that battle went really well. Um Corps back to full strength. Thirty two thousand infantry. I don't know if we lost any actual artillery. We've got $76,000 and 4,900 recruits left over after the fact. So we can assign some of those guys here to this 4th Division here in the 3rd uh, Corps. 2nd Corps, sorry. And... We need one more infantry brigade to fill out the second corps. We've got enough men to do it, so we'll go ahead and do that. What weapons do we have? Almost enough 1861 Springfields. We're one shy. Be a really nice weapon to have. Doesn't look like we've got enough of anything else. Pattern Enfield's the closest. We'll spend 27 grand giving these guys Pattern Enfields. They're a new unit. Brigadier General in Charge, Discipline Training, there you go. So the 1st and 2nd Corps are now fully built out. Um, and at one is a little bit more artillery than the other, but 30,000 and 32,000 respectively. And we've got 800 men left over to start building the 3rd Corps back up. Um, so that is what it is. Save... All right. And that's going to do it, guys. Um, sorry if I was a little bit quiet at some points in the stream. I had some streaming issues. There's one point where I missed about 30 seconds because uh, the stream actually dropped and I kind of got a little bit quiet after that. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. The Battle of Mansfield, a victory and helping us start to rebuild the Army of Northern Virginia as we begin the Overland Campaign in our next battle, which will look at the Battle of the Wilderness. But we'll cover that next time around. Until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.